Nosis Lukele is a fourth term student and she is from the Kingdom of Eswatini. She will be performing a traditional dance along with Spobo. This is Cizo and dancing with me in the video is Bobo. We're both from the Kingdom of Eswatini and we would like to share a part of our culture and this dance is called Unmiso and it's done by the Swazi girl called Imbani which directly translates to flower and it's just about celebrating the Swazi girl and her just showing how proud she is about her culture. I hope you enjoy this video. Gerardo Aspiri Iglesias is a first term student from Mexico and he will be reciting his poetry. Hello, my name is Gerardo Aspiri. I am from Mexico and I'm going to talk briefly about my poem National Anthem. National Anthem is a poem that is truly meaningful to me because I wrote it when I started studying in the US. And at the beginning of my stay here, I felt really alone and a little confused about how other people saw me and my culture. And as much as I tried to explain that my life was pretty much the same as any person who lived in the US, people wouldn't believe me and they would still ask me questions that didn't really make sense. And this made me feel frustrated and I decided to write a poem about it. So I started by saying how the first time they know that people in America or in other countries, when you're an international student, notice that you're different from them is in the way you speak. We have accents, everyone has accents, even Americans have accents. There's Southern accents, California accents, but from an inter for an international student, their accent is very distinct and they cannot quite place it. And you can see in their facial expressions that they're trying to figure out what's different about you. And though that's a normal thing to do and it's not unsettling, it does feel weird at the beginning when you're starting to get used to life here. So that's how I begin my poem. And then I proceed to give an explanation of how I feel when they start to ask, when people start to ask me questions that don't really make sense to me or that I would think are common sense. And even though this is not a hate poem towards anyone, 
it is me facing the difficulties of being an international student and having to live these experiences that sometimes makes you feel really bad about yourself and lonely. National Anthem. It all begins when you speak for the first time. No, not when you're wearing blue baby jumpsuits and you stutter attempting to say mom. Not when you see the red crispy fruit on the kitchen counter and you force your tongue to learn the word apple. Not when you blabber the songs your mother plays in the car to keep you entertained. It is when your voice leaves your mouth and small subtitles appear in their eyes that say, I know you're different. When they ask for the most mundane thing they can think of, your name, your innate curse, Gerardo, Gerardo, Jerry. I don't mind. I can't mind. Everyone here finds the name to be a riddle. How can you roll your R's? Why don't you celebrate Thanksgiving? Have you ever seen snow before? Yes. Yes, I've held snow in my hands and touched ice with my fingers. I have even put it in my mouth and swallowed, felt the cold rushing down my throat. But I've also seen the red sun sink behind the horizon, turning the sea seven tones of blue and lilac. I have seen women with dark skins and pink shawls create life by shaping clay with their hands, just like God molded Adam. Churches built entirely out of gold, pyramids that hide jades in their cores, glass buildings that rise and grasp at the clouds and fall when the earth shakes them a little too hard. Two volcanoes covered with the snow I'm asked about obsessively. Popocatépetl, Iztaccíhuatl, a muscular warrior, a sleeping beauty. How they watch over me, us, with their fiery eyes that ignite a song in my body and makes me forget I'm nameless. Hey everyone, I'm Julian. I'm from Madagascar and I'm a freshman student at Benton College. Today I'm going to be presenting you with my video game. It's the very first video game I ever made. And I made it last term for the final project of my video class and my computer science class. It was actually my first time doing computer science and so I didn't have much experience but I did want to make a game. And we learned Python that time around and I got really interested in how you could implement Python towards making websites very early in the term. So when I decided to make my game, I had already some experience with Python and a framework called Django. That framework allows you to make very powerful, very scalable websites for any purposes. And so it definitely worked with a game, although that's not the main area for which you would typically do it. I still got onto that wave and tried to make a game. I had to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript because there's no way you can make a website without having at least some knowledge in all of those. And so I still had to learn something about those. Yeah, so what I'm gonna be doing in a minute is showing you how the game was made and kind of like walking you through how it looks and what's the concept. And then there's going to be a link somewhere on this video for you to actually be able to play it yourself. So that's something I think is really exciting. The concept of my game really takes from the prompt we were having in video class that kind of like brought in the essence of it. That essence is basically about my personal history and what I've been doing and like what I'm aware of, what's around me. And so I decided being from Madagascar that that this game should have some sort of link with home. That's kind of how I got to the point of thinking about workers back home, playing around with ideas surrounding the standards of living, the differences that can exist between different countries, especially the United States and Madagascar, them being in two separate leagues, if you will. And, and, and I was just thinking that it would be crazy for somebody here or somebody on the internet in general 
to realize how low income can be in a country like Madagascar. I'm pretty sure that other countries also suffer from this, but a lot of the time I've heard that, I mean, tourists going to countries like Madagascar, experiencing those super low prices, super good opportunities to like be in a five-star hotel for a portion of the price you would usually pay for it and just kind of like being able to go to restaurants and see such low prices and feel like your purchasing power is just so high compared to the prices that are there and so that leads a lot of people I've met to think that the prices are actually so low that it doesn't matter if the workers don't make much money. The idea of this game is really trying to break that assumption and expand people's understanding of how it actually works, how tough it can be to have low wages even in a country that has low expenses and just kind of like seeing how this affects people's lives in terms of their basic needs and in terms of their entertainment or their health or pretty much as many aspects of their lives that could fit within that game. If you're making the money a minimum wage worker makes in Madagascar, you're probably not doing great. That's $55 a month and $55 a month for expenses that go from your health to groceries to uh, electricity and and wire and just make your family survive that's just something that's really tough and i hope this game can touch you the way i intended it to i'm gonna be showing you guys how uh kind of like the process into the game and the concept having some visuals which which is going to be super useful and so i hope that you guys can get a better understanding of what i'm trying to achieve here so this is the local server i'm host i'm currently hosting the game on I'll be showing you guys a bit of the behind the scenes later. I'm gonna be using Firefox to show you guys the game, but hopefully by the time you guys play this game, you'll be able to play it on any browser. Essentially, the game is made of three web pages. The first one being the welcome page. And so it's this very simple web page where you can kind of just have a description of the game and a few images that kind of just show you how it's going to be looking like and this button right here that will lead you to the second page which is the actual game so once you click right there you get to this page where the game is showing and it immediately starts so right here you have the video it's a um, eight minute video you're not going to be running through the all all the eight minutes if you were playing the game but it's an eight minute video that basically is the basis for the game and all the coding i, I did was basically making that video into a game so yeah i tried to use this very colorful color palette and um, this title chance at life that kind of just represents the idea of this game that's kind of like taking a serious look within a game setting which is not which is an entertaining setting the section of the game is essentially a presentation of the character you're going to be playing. That character is going to be the one that's going to be limited to the budget, aka $55 here. So now the game has started. As you can see, there's a bar down here that shows you the remaining budget that you have. And so, for example, here the first question you have is about the electricity bill. And so if I choose to pay it now, then the budget you have left is going to be decreasing. Mm, other things I've had to code in are the controls because they're not the regular controls you would typically find and also this bar on top here that kind of shows you how much time you have left. This time I'm going to be choosing not to pay for this expense which is basically choosing not to send my daughter to school next month. Um, the goal of the game for the player is to survive the entire month and not run out of money by the time the questions run out. But yeah, that's essentially how the game looks and how the game behaves. We can just take a quick look at uh, what happens in the background. So the game is comprised into this single web page. Um, it has just all the elements. This is the HTML file. It has all the elements that are comprised in the game and there is a there's a javascript file that is much longer 
and that basically um, holds all the mechanics and all the information about the game. So I'm hoping for you guys to try it out and take a look at it and see what you guys think. Definitely love some feedback about like the impact it had on you and kind of like how it made you feel. Those are things that I'm really looking forward to hearing from people. So don't hesitate to, I don't know, reach out to me or if there's a form nearby this video for the conference, just just like send me all your feedback about it because there's been a lot of work put into this and I'm really looking forward to improving it with uh, what people thought about it. So that's it. Thank you for joining me on this journey and I'm really, don't forget to check it out with the link that's going to be around here and uh, check out the other works that I've been put into this showcase. There's really nice things out there and so I'm hoping that all of, all of this work can impact you in the way it impacted us. Have a nice one. <laughs> Marta Sharbakova is a second term student coming from Belarus who will be singing a Belarusian song accompanied by her friend, also Belarusian, Uliana Shkel, who will be dancing to it. Vitaem! My name is Marta. My name is Uliana, and we're both from Belarus. And today we would like to share with you a glimpse of Belarusian culture through a traditional uh, song and a dance. The song is called um, Leti Halka, and it's in Belarus. Enjoy! <laughs> Молодая девчи, девчи, но никак Отягаем плач Не пускай мя, не мама Урошу до крыницы они Они жито, они жито жати I really 
hope that you guys enjoyed this exhibition and this showcase. It was really a demonstration of the wonderful talent we have in the international community and I'm really looking forward to bringing even more of that to light in future years. Now, for the suggestions that I was talking about in the introduction that would go for more representation of international students, something that we thought of is bringing back the multicultural festival but making it college run so that we can have Bennington support in the preparation for this festival. And another suggestion would be bringing back the Kilpat Fellowship for International Student Services in the future. If you have any other suggestions, if you have a message to the performers, to the students that showed their work, then please fill out the Google form that will be linked next to the session and contact me please if you have any inquiries, any suggestions, any recommendations. I am always available at my email address. Here are a few questions that can get you thinking and help you complete that Google form. Thank you so much for joining this session and I really hope we can make this transition from consumption to inclusion and to equity and to justice for the international community.